In today's video, I'm going to turn a normal server form into a fully custom one. One thing to note is that this is episode 2 of the series. So if you haven't watched the last part, you should probably do so. And now, enjoy the video. And with that, sup YouTube. So first of all, I'm gonna be replacing our buttons so they have a name and an icon. In game we can see that our custom panel has the buttons with the custom icons. So now let's just see what's going on in the JSONUI world with the server form. Scrolling down we can see that our custom panel is referencing some element from the same namespace. That being the long form panel. So now we just have to find this element and see what's going on there. Since we deleted almost every item in the last episode, we will have to find those elements in the default serverform.json file. In here, we are gonna look for the long form panel. Once found, one might see that inside the long form panel, there is a control for another panel, which references yet another panel. So we will have to look for the long form scrolling content panel this time, which is actually below this panel. And scrolling down, we can already guess what's gonna happen next, because there we are referencing <laughs> yet another element which contains another panel as reference, that being the long form dynamic buttons panel. And finally, after traversing hundreds of panels, we will find our final panel, because in this panel, we have the button factory. The button factory is actually that thing that generates the buttons for the form. And we also have a collection name as well as a collection length, which will be important for the factory to know how many buttons to generate. So let's create our custom panel by firstly creating a panel with an empty array of controls in which we're gonna paste the element with the button factory in. And now we're just gonna take the name of our custom panel and paste its name into our long form. The button factory actually references the button which we also can just copy over and paste it in our project. After we have successfully pasted the button, let's make sure to rename the button and also reference the button correctly in the factory. Now we could change some properties of the button and see what happens. For that, I'm just gonna change every size to 64 pixels. In game, we can see that, um, yeah, we need to do a lot more work than that. First of all, I'm gonna change your type to a panel instead of a stack panel, because a panel allows for items to overlap, unlike a stack panel. I will also have to remove the orientation, because panels don't have an orientation. But now the image is gone. Well, this is because the button is over the image. For that, we just have to change the layer of the image to something high, which will then reveal the image. But now the text is all messed up, so we will have to move it down. Inside the button, we'll find the form button text, which we're gonna completely remove. So now the form doesn't have any button text at all. But I only did this, so I can create my own text that we can position where we want. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna remove this element since it is kinda useless. So now I'll focus on our custom text. I'm gonna create this custom element here, which will contain our text. Since we are dealing with text, I will have to set the type to a label and make the text of the label be the form button text. And let's just give it a very high layer again, so it doesn't get eaten up by our button again. The default color for text is white, but because that is lame, we're gonna change it to black by setting its color to 000. And finally, I'm gonna anchor the button text to the bottom middle of the button. There is one more thing though, because we use the variable form button text, which is currently not available in this context. So we have to add a binding to our code, which basically tells that we want to retrieve the form button text from our current collection. But now the button text is just a little bit offset, which we can fix by just adding the offset property with a value towards the Y coordinate. But now the button text is fine, but we still need to change the orientation of the buttons. So now we just have to find our button factory again and change the orientation from vertical to horizontal. So now the buttons are in a row, but now we actually need to center them. For that we'll just change the size of the whole panel, as well as change the anchors from center to center. But the buttons are way too close together, so we need to give them a little bit of padding. For that we will have to copy the contents of our custom button completely and create a new panel 
where the size is bigger than the button itself. And now we add our custom button as a control for a custom panel by giving it some random name for an element and just pasting our contents there. We will also have to change the size of the panel that contains the button factory to match the size of the button. At this point you should probably also change the size of the background itself to whatever suits you the best. And you might as well also want to remove any offsets that were added because of the scrolling panel which we do not have anymore. If we look at the form now, we can see that the images are way too far to the bottom. While they are technically centered, it doesn't look right because the distance between the text and the border of the button is not the same. But that's an easy fix, because we can just add an offset to the image and now it looks centered. And yeah, that's actually it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe and tell me what I should do next. Bye bye.